Well, everyone wants to be a public figure. Obviously, everyone wants to be famous. But if you are famous, there's a special burden that you bear right now. If you're a person in the public eye who dares even briefly to think for yourself, there is roughly a 100% chance that an organized group of fascists on the Internet is going to try to destroy your life. They'll get you fired. They'll pick at your house. They'll make certain your kids are miserable. They're not doing it because they like you or dislike you personally. You're irrelevant. They don't care about you. They're doing it because they understand that truth tends to metastasize. Once someone prominent with a megaphone starts saying true things, people hear it. And pretty soon the whole edifice of lies comes crashing down and the fascists on the internet have less power. They're revealed as the dishonest thugs that they are. And they don't want that. So they try and crush you before it happens. This is inevitable. The question is, how do you respond when they try to crush you? And there are only two possible options, and both of them, it turns out, were on display today. Both come from Great Britain because the assault on speech and thought is a global phenomenon. Here's the first. Winston Marshall plays banjo for a terrific folk band called Mumford & Sons. Marshall's been on the fascist radar for quite some time now. A few years ago, he said something nice about Jordan Peterson. Now, that doesn't mean that Winston Marshall is a right winger. He probably isn't. But it does suggest he might be a free thinker, which, as we noted, is a massive threat to the fraud industrial complex. Finally, the other day, Winston Marshall went too far. He praised Andy Noe's new book about Antifa. No describes Antifa as what it is, a criminal mob. But you can't do that right now because it suggests that there might be something wrong with hurting people in order to get what you want. So they decided to destroy Winston Marshall, and today they succeeded. Marshall issued this statement over Twitter, quote, over the past few days, I have come to better understand the pain I caused by the book I endorsed. Obviously, he wrote this at gunpoint, but he still wrote it. Quote, I have offended not only a lot of people I don't know, but also those closest to me, including my bandmates. And for that, I am truly sorry. As a result of my actions, liking a book, I am taking time away from the band to examine my blind spots, end quote. So Winston Marshall is leaving his job, another victory for the fascists on the Internet. That's one way to handle attacks on speech. Just surrender. That's what most famous people do. You see it every day. The guy who used to host The Bachelor may never work again. His crime? No one even knows what he did wrong. But he apologized for it anyway. But there's another way to handle those attacks, and it comes from our friend Piers Morgan, whom we told you last night just left his job on a British morning show after failing to be sufficiently impressed by that whiny duchess from L.A. complaining about how hard her life is. Now, Piers Morgan knew what the script was supposed to be. Oh, you poor oppressed duchess. But he refused to read it. So now he's unemployed. Today, Piers Morgan issued this statement, quote, On Monday, I said I didn't believe Meghan Markle in her Oprah interview. I've had time to reflect on this opinion, and I still don't. If you did, okay. Freedom of speech is a hill I'm happy to die on. Thanks for all the love and hate. I'm off to spend more time with my opinions. So like Winston Marshall, Piers Morgan is out of a job tonight. But unlike Winston Marshall, Morgan told the truth. He refused to let the mob make him lie. And that is an inspiration to all of us. Piers Morgan just reminded the world that some things are more important than having a job, like your dignity and your self-respect. History will treat him well. Good for you, Piers Morgan.